Which I'm really excited about this next interview. Critics are calling the new Netflix movie All Quiet on the Western Front one of the best war movies ever made. The film follows the life of a German soldier after enlisting into the German army with his friends, all gung-ho to be world uh, war heroes, only to find out the ugly side and the many ugly facets of war. Joining me now to discuss the film is the executive producer and co-script writer, Leslie Patterson. Leslie. Hello. Welcome to KUSI. Thank you. We should mention that not only is this project, I mean, you've been hit with the talent stick quite <laughs> uh, qu several times because you're also a world-class endurance athlete, hence you're knowing Bob, and Bob brought you to me, so yes. thank you for coming to KUSI. Thank you so much. I mean, I love San Diego. I've spent the last 20 years here being an endurance athlete and, you know, training all over the county, and a lot of people know me for that. Not just... Uh, endurance athlete, a very successful one. Could you just please brag a little bit on oh, yourself? Okay, I'm a five-time world champion in off-road triathlon. Uh, so that's swimming, mountain biking, and trail running. So pretty much I'm, I'm crazy multiplied by a thousand. <laughs> right. Now, all that alone time on the trail allows you, you have to occupy your mind. Absolutely. And so, you, so why not come up with an idea to make a movie, right? Why not? I mean, you spend, you know, generally about six or seven hours a day of training out in the mountains for me. And so, yeah, I just, it lets my imagination run wild. And uh, I studied film and theater at San Diego State, in fact, a master's degree there. And so uh, I have that kind of acumen. And so digging into stories to occupy myself and really think about the world, uh, that's what I spent all of those hours doing. All Quiet on the Western Front was required reading for me way back in the day when we were going through school. It's a, it's a powerful story, but it's a hard one to get through. It, it, it is. Gut-wrenching is what it is. It is. Uh, how, why did you pick that, replicate that? I mean, how, as far as where, where did you shoot? Yep. And then are the tr did you use the trenches that are still in existence? So we shot in Czech Republic, just outside of Prague. Um, it's a great location. It's a lot cheaper to film there. And our di director, Edward Berger, a, a very well-known German director, incredibly talented, as you'll see when you watch the movie, um, he wanted to make it as realistic and impactful and uh, make the audience feel like they were experiencing it right there with the main character. Paul. So a lot of the shots that you will see, it's kind of almost like on the shoulder of the character. It's very verite. You're in the action. Um, so they built out the trenches. Uh, so everything is everything is reconstructed. It's wow. all it's wow. all real. So that's an ordeal all to itself. Oh, un incredible. How is it? How I know you're not intimidated easily. You wouldn't be as successful as you were. But when everyone's kind of looking at you, right. like, and they're expecting you, do you ever have that moment of self-doubt because you haven't done it before? Do you know, no, <laughs> of course not. Not. <laughs> yeah, do, but do you know why I'm perfectly willing to say I don't know, uh, I get it wrong and I'm willing to learn. So, you know, I think through my experience in sport with so much failure, you realize that the growth comes from the failure. So all those races that I lost, I learned so much to then put it to winning in the next races. And I understand that this is a process in film. And that's also the beauty of it. The beauty of the craft is in mastering it, not necessarily in the outcome. So I, I just love learning. At what point in the endeavor did you realize, hold it, this is, this is gonna be better than I thought it was gonna be? Um, I think when we got Edward on board as a director, he is so, uh, yeah, he's so cerebral, his understanding of character, of story, of theme, and how he visually represents that in the other work that he had done and how he spoke about how he wanted to do this film, it was instant. Um, and when we first saw the cut of the, the film, we were blown away um, at what he has managed to achieve. It's just elevated our script and we're so excited about it. It's a foreign film. It is in German. Yes. So you're, and I assume you're dealing with German-speaking production hands, right? Right. So, so give me an idea. What? The, yeah. That alone is time-consuming. The, the yeah. translation process, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, to be honest, most Germans speak English, so that that wasn't really a problem. They're they're incredibly proficient in that, and uh, our director translated the script uh, to give it that sort of authenticity. Um, so you know, it wasn't it wasn't too bad at all. And we did a lot of research into the German history. Uh, we uh, read a lot of uh, translated German diaries of soldiers. To 
to understand the ethos, to understand right. the mentality from the German perspective, and then to have Edward come in and really, uh, you know, infuse it with that German sensibility was so, so critical for the authenticity of the film. And that's what comes across. So the reviews are off the chart, yeah. which has to be... Oh. I mean, for, for a foreign film to get the reviews that you're getting, people are calling it uh, Reverent Meets nine, 1917. I mean, jeez, right. oh, too epic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Loving it. For, for, your first, <laughs> for your first film out, it's just like, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so w with that said, then there's, I hate to jinx you, but then there's the buzz. I don't know, have you heard of this Hollywood production called The Oscars? And the, yes. And they have a category right. of... Meet behind supporting it. So we feel very, very fortunate. Um, and it's a story that, that, it's a film that needs to be seen. Um, you know, given the current climate. Oh, absolutely. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, can you make me one promise? Yes. If things go well in February and you get yes. the good news prior to you picking out your gown, could you come back to KUSI? Because I want to see this. T I'm going to see it today when I get home from work. Wonderful. And then I'd I like to chat with will. you again. But only if you promise to come out and run with me. Ah. Uh, well. <laughs> Yeah, I think you'd lose me in the what first What do you say? Should we shake on it? All <laughs> first, right. First 400 Excellent. yards. But uh, hey, thanks for making time for us. And Pleasure. I wish you nothing but continued success. And a big thank you to Bob Baffett who... Uh, who int introduced us. Yes. Thank you, Bob. So I, I hope... Uh, I hope this is a, you know, maybe you can even include me after you thank your lawyer, your hair and, hair and makeup team. You I will. I'll KUSI. say. That's it. KUSI. It's all because of you guys. And that Paul Ruddy guy. All right. The, the day is slowly warming up. Mark Mathis will join us with uh, 